Not again. The, this... Uh, why? Bruce, why? Oh, boy. That's mean. That's a missed opportunity. Who are you? Looking at them through the telescope. <laughs> Hi there. Philip here. And this is a new portion of web design that would make you quit your competitive web design job and become a semi truck driver. Personal portfolios. Nothing personal. Number five. A portfolio website that features Lucian Pavarotti in flip-flops on a scooter, driving away from the pool. Warning, this is also a website where Bruce Willis will laugh at your snake. Starting up. Intriguing. What the... Not again. Not again. What is wrong with you people? I've already looked at the portfolio that looked like Mac OS in my previous video. But unlike the previous portfolio, this site is doing two pretty incredible things. Switch theme. <gasps> Switch theme. <laughs> Friends with pools. That's, yeah, that's definitely my thing. The first thing is Lucian Pavarotti. He makes everything incomparably better. For instance, if you're ashamed of your car in one way or the other, uh, print out a large xerocopy of Lucian Pavarotti's portrait and uh, carefully, with great precision and strong adhesive, apply it uh, to the windscreen of your car. You would not be able to see, but Luciano will guide you to greatness. No, this website is incredible on its own, and its author might not even be aware of this. Here is why. Depending on your age, this site either lets you experience something that you have never experienced before, or something that you have experienced but a very long time ago. Oh yes, X. Oh, S, X. Mac OS, X. Was released in 2001 and looked and worked more or less like modern Mac OS. Before that, there was original Macintosh operating system that was introduced in 1984 alongside with the first Macs. And here is the thing. The full screen mode here is for a reason. When you click on it, all your browser UI goes away and you are back in 2003, where a lot of people were still using Mac OS 9 on the grayishly white Power Macintoshes. It's a cute and nostalgic feeling and it becomes poignantly stronger when you discover a radio, a snake and a Bruce Willis. Radio FM. <gasps> yes, I feel bored. I feel bored. Use arrow keys on your keyboard to control the snake. The snake? Hey, what? Why? Bruce, why? Yeah. -ha. That's mean. Hey. Come on. Hey. You can do that. You can do that. No. Come on. You can do that. Yeah. Yes. The only missed opportunity here is the portfolio itself, which comes in the form of external links. Imagine you're in 2001, open the old Internet Explorer, and then a website from 20 years in the future opens in it. The second thought that makes this site amazing, quite an unorthodox thought, pure heresy actually. I like cars. God damn it, who picked these slides? 50 years ago, cars looked like this. 30 years ago, cars looked like this. 10 years ago, cars looked like this. And now, cars look like this. I now think that classic macOS actually looks futuristic. Wouldn't it be great if at some point in the future Apple releases a macOS that looks like this in some revised or interpreted form? It'd be actually quite cool to build this as a concept. Send me a link if you decide to do that, I'd be super curious to see it. And while the next portfolios use super cool and complex 3D stuff using 3GS, this portfolio uses good old HTML with very simple CSS. Your grandma's grandma could have built it 50 years ago. It shows that you don't really need to know any cutting-edge complex web dev. The most important thing is the idea. Number 4. A website that features an endless horse. Come on! I have no idea where this keeps coming from. Number 4. A portfolio website where is the TV. Mm, loading resources. That's interesting already. It's... Uh... That one goes even further back in time, so I don't have a sentimental comment. But maybe my grandpa has something to say. Okay, no. Then I'll have to do it myself.
The moon actually doesn't spin like this because it's tightly locked to Earth. This old screen effect is done with post-processing in 3GS. It would actually be also done with CSS gradients. I wonder how much less processor heavy it would be. There are things though which you can't do without 3GS post-processing, like for example this. There is no way you can do it with CSS. Compared to the previous site, I like how the projects are integrated. They are inside the site itself and are not external links. That is better because it does not interrupt the user flow. I want a vehicle. Where is my vehicle? Bridges. Uh, Jeff. Bridges. I want this site to be more gamified because it reminds me of an arcade game from 1982 or a movie with the same name, Tron, where Jeff Bridges is in it. Now it's connected. <coughs> this site sort of represents my retro futuristic thought from before as well. Number three, a portfolio website that shows you hidden things. Ah. Oh, that's, I wonder how it's made. It's probably a canvas element and some. Ooh, no. The, wow, what the? It's here because it's impressive and I have no idea how it's done. Focusing on cutting-edge projects, he pushes the boundaries of design. Focusing on one point on his... <laughs> I think the about text when written in third person makes you sound super important and very professional, regardless of what it says. Philip is a goat keeper with experience of keeping multiple goats. Focusing on one point on his shoe, he pushes a goat towards a successful mating experience. This is all very serious. It puts some distance between you and the client and I'll leave it for you to decide whether it's good or bad. I that's a missed opportunity. What excites me a lot about this website is two big opportunities that I think it missed, unfortunately. Missed opportunity number one. Where is the where is my diamond? You have this giant diamond that gives you superpowers and you almost don't use it. I would feel like Dumbledore has given me his magic wand and then I turned an innocent woman into a toad and then used it as a door stopper. There's so much you can do with this. There is so much text on the site, you could use this diamond to reveal different text. Or you can do this with different UI elements. Why should you do that though? Let's ask a question. Why is this diamond here? Because it looks expensive and premium. That's I think why. That's I think the look that was intended here. The question is this. Would it have looked less expensive and premium if it wasn't a diamond, but a cube, a cylinder, a triangular prism, a hexagonal prism, or a prism in the shape of a duck? or all of them together changing randomly or on some interactions. Can you see where I'm going with this? See if you can guess it and pause the video now for a rare chance to win a hair dryer. The offer only applies to those residing in Tutin, having recently seen a blind turkey and regularly commuting to Cockfosters, during a partial blue moon eclipse, while fully drunk and wearing costume of wild hawk and or disguised as an old lady bearing the name Bob O'Duncan. A prism is a three-dimensional shape, with two identical polygon bases and rectangular sides connecting those bases. Diamond is not a prism. A cube is, a cylinder is, a triangular prism is, a hexagonal prism is, and a prism in the form of a duck is. The tagline that this website could have had is this, looking at the world through the prism of creativity. Who are you? It's probably like a background, and then this whole thing is, sits inside the canvas, probably. Can't be CSS, it can't be CSS. Canvas. Yeah, there it is. There you are. Let's say delete. Da -da 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 Number two. A portfolio by James Hall, where there is no hole. Ooh. <gasps> Impossible box. Just like all of the sites in this video, this site creates an experience that you've never experienced before in real life. It could be nice to make these impossible geometries interactive and maybe even create puzzles with them, or maybe show what it feels like to enter them. Could be like an office building from a non-existing season of Severance. Severance, season zero. This has never happened before. Again. This elephant almost gave me a stroke. Unlike the next portfolio website we'll look at, this one makes me more anxious than it should be. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Click here. Oh my god. But I can I need to come back. No no no. I need I need to come hmm why? Why don't you why? 
James Hall. Oh, yeah. hmm. I can't dismiss the pop-up without leaving the space. I feel the close button should close the pop-up and not kick me out of there. I can't zoom in and explore the contents in detail. I think it's not a good idea to limit the abilities of your visitor. When they expect something intuitively, you should give it to them. 20% off the chain restraints for your elderly loved ones, this Thanksgiving only. www.saythankyoustaythankful.mossad Pay once, save on a care home. The exception when you can do it is, I guess, when the main idea and the theme of the website is somehow related to it. The more sane example would be a website of a charity that helps people with disabilities and makes visitors experience these disabilities in the form of the UX, triggering the emotion of compassion. Physics. My portfolio is a personal laboratory where I get to experiment with new technologies. This is great. You can also scale this quite well as the design is modular. Add more boxes connecting to each other. And maybe even add sections where you can edit the source code, a sort of like a 3D code pen. Did you know, by the way, that uh, Sean Pen was originally named Code Pen? But uh, when the Code Pen was released, he had to change his name uh, to avoid confusion. And finally, portfolio number one, which I've made one because it makes me uncomfortable. Uh, look how uncomfortable it makes me. The. Uh -huh. Oh, this is yeah. The, this uh, I wonder. It, it makes you no no horrible. And this is amazing. This portfolio is like the theme music in the season two of White Lotus. Ooh, this is much worse than I thought it would be. This portfolio is like a good wine or a complicated love hate relationship or a movie character that is not flat. It gives you a mix of satisfying, uncomfortable, curious, and frustrating emotions. And it has just the right amount of each, which prevents you from saying, oh, fuck this shit. Why does it cause these emotions, though? Uh, not only because these boxes are not always easily accessible. I want to say that it's the experience that you can't experience in the real life, but actually, you can. Well, almost. Unlike normal perspective, orthographic projection is when the lines are completely parallel. Completely parallel. Parallel. Ooh. And don't cross when you extend them. It's the objects in the orthographic projection. You don't see objects like this in real life, unless you looked at them with a telescope from a great distance. It's just that you would not be able to normally interact with these objects looking at them through the telescope. This portfolio site presents an interesting idea, making the UX and the UI deliberately flawed. I wonder where it takes us if it's explored more and becomes a trend. There are portfolio websites, however, where flaws can literally hurt you and leave a physical mark on you. Check it out here. Thank you very much for watching, like it if you liked it, subscribe, hit the bell, it supports the factory that produces bells and whistles, and see you soon.